So whatever the element that I have here towards the left, so it should be less than this pure element. And then whenever I consider this element, whatever I have towards the right, so this element, so whatever I have, it should be greater than pure element. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on data structure, especially guys searching and sorting. So in this session, I will be discussing one of the important and interesting sort that's going to be the quick sort. So guys, so mainly I'm focusing on the concept how exactly we sort than the program and algorithm in this session. Yes, why? Because I'll be discussing the program and algorithm in the lab. All right, so guys, let's quickly get into the concept because it is very important that you need to understand how exactly we are sorting. Only then you'll be able to understand the program and algorithm. So fine, so I have a array or uh, the number of uh, elements that I have, which is in the unsorted manner. Imagine this is the array that we have, which we have to sort. So when it comes to the concept of quick sort, you need to consider the last element, what we have as a pure, all right? So this is what we call it as a pure element. So why are we considering this pure? So guys, when it comes to the pure element, we have to remember one rule. What is that rule? So when I consider this pure element, imagine this is the pure element. So whatever the element that I have here towards the left, so it should be less than this pure element. And then whenever I consider this element, whatever I have towards the right, so this element, so whatever I have, it should be greater than pure element. So this is the condition that I need to follow. So recursively, I have to keep following this until I get the sorted array is what you need to remember. So now let's understand how exactly we are performing the quick sort. So guys, so the first thing that you need to remember here is, let me consider two pointer, one is I, another one is J. All right, so fine. So first I will be comparing this J with the last element, so which we have considered it as a pure, all right, so fine. So if the element what I have here in the J is greater than the pure element, I will not swap it, I will retain it as it is. So seven is obviously greater than four, so I will not do anything, I will retain it as it is. So fine, then after that, this J will move to the next element. So what is the next element that I have? The next element that I have here is two. So coming to the two, J is coming to the two, and then I, whatever I have here, so that will come to the seven. So now what happens? I will compare this J with the last element. So this J is less than four. Yes, it is true. In that particular condition, I will swap this two number. So what happens? Two will come here, seven will come here. So that's what you need to remember. So then after that, what will be there? So I will have like this, all right? So fine, I will have like this. Cool, then after that, so what is that I'm going to do? So observe here, J will come here, all right? So J will come here, again, I will come here. So fine, so what is the next number that I have to swap, all right? So that's what we need to remember, right? So whenever I have J, always I have to compare this J with the pure element is what you need to remember. So fine, I have uh, J, what is the value that I have there? Four, so obviously one is less than four. Should I swap it? Yes, with whom I should swap? So with the, I have to swap. So if I swap this two number, what will happen? So guys, two, one, seven, eight, six, three, five, four will be there, correct? So now observe here what I, what I have here. I have I here and I have J here and I have nothing because I have only two pointers, right? So that's what you need to remember. So fine. Now, which number I have to compare with Piot now? So I have to compare the number which J is pointing. So fine. I will compare this number. What is the number that I have? Eight. So eight is greater than four. So I, I don't have to swap again. I will retain it as it is. So J will get incremented to six. So again, I will compare this J with four. So again, six is greater. I don't have to swap it. Again, I will increment J. So J is three. So three is less than four. Should I swap? Yes, you have to swap. So you have to swap this three with this I. So that's what you need to remember. So fine, if I swap, what will be there? So two, one. So this three will come to this position. And then I will have, uh, what is the number that I will have? Obviously eight, six, in this position seven will be there, five, four will be there. All right, that's what you need to remember. So fine, I was in this position, it will get incremented, is it? So observe here carefully, so I have I. 
all right so fine guys i have the j here i have the j here and i will compare the next element so i will compare the next element so 5 observe what i have i have 5 5 is greater than 4 so guys i have reached the last element that is pure so 5 is greater than 4 so i don't have to swap so it is done so i have reached the last element now what is that i have to do so guys i have i here all right i have i here so where do i place this 4 so i plus 1 i have to place the 4 in the i plus 1 so after that so my array will become like this 4 8 6 7 5 so this is what i will have now you check the condition so this is pure whatever the elements that i have left side is it less than pure element yes it is true whatever the element that i have this side it is greater than pure yes it is true so like this it will be keep on recursively doing until it gets sorted completely that's what you need to remember with respect to the quick sort this is how we perform the quick sort is what you need to remember with this i've come to an end of this session take care bye bye